like my family. We have been together, God, and I for a long time. But the Lord see fit. Whenever the designated time is for us to be called home. But I want to thank this family for just giving me the opportunity to just to share in providing this homegoing service. Sister Gloria has instructed me. Someone passed the same instructions on to you. If there are any changes that will be made, you're going to have to talk to Miss Wilson. Talk to Miss Wilson. And then that change will take place. First of all, we're going to move on with the program. First of all, we're going to have an invocation by the pastor, Reverend Paul Bennett. After that, we're going to have New Testament reading by Reverend Gene Owens, and after that, Gene and I are going to come back and attempt to do a selection. Amen. And we're doing it all. We ask the government yourself accordingly. You come up. We ask you don't stay up until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Right? Oh God, our Father, I'm looking at the river. Here we are again, calling on your holy name. We come to tell you, thank you. Thank you for life, strength, and peace. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing right now. Thank you, Master, for the way you bless our soul. Thank you for a mind of one on <laughs> See what the end is going to be. Have mercy on you. God, in time like this, yes, yes. we need a Savior. Yes, yes, yes. In times like this, yes, yes. we need an anchor. Yes, yes. Times like this, yes. we need you to hold us yes. in the hall of your hand. Yes. We ask you to have mercy on you. Look upon us and continue to Yes, yes, Lord. Well, God, we pray to look down upon this family. Yes, yes. Hold them in the hall of your hand. Yes, Lord. Let them know all power all is in your hand. Yes, yes. Let them know, oh God, that you will must be there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not here on earth as it kills in hell. Yes, yes, yes. Well, oh, Master, bless them a mighty way. Yes, yes. Send your blessing down on them. Oh, please, God, bless them today. And, oh, God, not only today, but in the days to go. They're going to need you, Lord. We can't get along without you. We ask you to have mercy on them. Bless them one by one. Bless them name by name. Have mercy on them, Lord. No, Father God, we'll be so careful. If you just do that for us, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the honor and all the love. We'll lift your name up on us. Please, just do it for us. And if you do it, everything will be all right. Have mercy on us. And when we come down to the end of our time, we'll be able to say, well, we're the not thankful, sir. Hey, we'll talk about a few things. Yes. But come on up. Yes. I'm making favor over me. Yes. All of these blessings we yes. ask in Jesus' name. Jesus. And all of God's children will say amen. Amen. Oh. Yeah, we 
for my cry, oh Lord, and give help to my cry. Yes. Hold not thy peace at thy teeth. For I am a stranger with thee, sojourner of all my father, Lord. For spare me, that I might go and recover strength before I go here and be no more. All thy have been my dwelling place, O God, in all generations. Before the mountain and before the hill. Yes, Word of God for all of God's children. Amen. 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 The Word of God from the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Read this. Well, we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, yes. a house not made with hands, eternal into the heavens. Yes. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. <clears throat> if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Yeah. He who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Yeah. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Yeah. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. Yeah. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in his body, right. whether good or evil. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
have believers? He never was mistaken. And then he concluded, he said, I let nothing or nobody pluck me you. Out of my hand. We can always depend on the Lord God Jesus Christ. Because he's not my advocate. He stepped out of eternity into time for you and I. He was in eternity, but he came in time for you and I so that we could get ready in time for eternity. All right. God bless you. We're going to move on. We like to give honor to this great pastor, this great church. Yes, yes. Pastor Christopher. Cover, who is a renowned pastor. We like to give honor to him. And to all the members that are here. We're going to move on to this time. We're going to have tribute from his son, Mr. Don Woodson Jr. This time. And after that, we're going to have tribute from the grandchildren, my Dallas and Tom. Amen. Amen. Where do I start? Thank you, Don Wilson. Everybody bring on the radio. We love you. Dragged me along with all these football games to spread the state. Now I'm going to go to this passion. I'm going to go to the season last season. All the teams that you gave to me that I didn't listen to. Even though they're trying to act like I did. I'm going to go to the city. I promise you. And every time when you work with me, you have that two minute window either do right or basically music. Do right. <laughs> but what can I say? Touched everybody's heart with the radio, made some out of state popular. Y'all listen to him, got his own horn show. Andy Don was. And in his famous words, He's the best in the world. All right. All right. I love you. I know you're going to be with me. You're going to be well with us. Thank you.
gentle and gruff. Once you said it, that was enough. Real and rough, you granddad were the definition of tough. Always leading your family in prayer when the church doors open. There was no doubt you'd be there. Never wrong, always right. To your wondering grandkids, you were a beacon of light. Dashing and dear, you were always there to lend a hand or a fear. Peaceful and kind, loving your family was always first on your mind. An admired angel, we love so true. This day, we can be miss you. Right along. This time we're going to have uh, expressions from the class of 1967. Mr. Larry Douglas, Mr. Greg Cohen. This time. And after that, we're going to have uh, acknowledgments and resolution by Sister Lori Love. Especially, you go back and sit down and talk. And 
don't always tell me I'm going to be brought I'm going to be an aunt, I'm going to be in prison. Tenth grade. He knew then. And we all now know what the accomplishment is. Uh, outside of that, God broke Rest in peace. We all love you. Glory. God. You know it more so than I do. Before Ms. Love comes, I'd like to ask the class of Lee Jane Townsend, class of 1967, please stay. Wherever you may be. And I'd like to ask you to join me in giving down the last good old crowd. On the count of three. One, two, three.
family and a copy of Catholic Church Press. Respectfully submitted on the 29th day of March 2024 on behalf of the officers and members of the Republican Missionary Baptist Church, the Reverend Paul Benton, Pastor, Sister Lorraine Love. The family of Don Edwin Wilson C. would like to thank everyone for their kind expressions. Your phone calls, visit, flowers, thoughts, and prayers have all their prayer during our time of grief. May God continue to bless each of you in our prayer. A more formal thank you. At this time, we want to acknowledge all the pastors. We are here from gas that you stand and let this family know that you're here in support of them at this time. Thank you. God bless you. And this is my last thing that I will get up here for. But I want to thank this was for asking me to just be a part of this ongoing ceremony. I was out to Don and Miss Wilson House a couple of weeks, three weeks ago, and the Spirit of God gave me an awakening to just visit Don because we was in elementary school and in high school together. That was just why I just to be a part of it. And sing. We're going to have a solo at this time. I passed the Maurice Hill. And after the solo, we're going to have eulogy by the Reverend Dr. Louis E. Logan II. We ask that you to give me your own attention. If you know Jesus still lives, say amen. He's got it. And you don't see me. And you don't before I knew who he was. Who he was. I was ready to go. I was in high school. God bless you. And have a smile. Ooh.
solace in you. Yeah. Lord, this will give you praise. Oh, yeah. It taught us how to trust you with the eyes and love. Yeah, yeah. As we celebrate the legacy of Dan and Dog. Pray, God, that in some strange way you would not only occupy us, be with us, and walk with us, but teach us another level of trusting in you. We commit this moment into your hands and are grateful for life and legacy. No way. Lord, no We ask, Lord, that you make this special tribute that he would be pleased. But most of all, you will be pleased. Here I pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. All of God's people say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord today. Great things. Somebody yeah. shall break them. Great things. Uh, holy is oh, the name yes, yes. of our God. Yes. In our presence of the Holy Ghost, somebody shall holy ghost. Oh, holy ghost. Holy Ghost is our comforter, keeper, strength, guide, and support. And without the Holy Ghost, our gathering here would be sound and pure, signifying nothing. We bless the Lord and pray to God for the union of his house. Bethlehem family. First lady, we bless the Lord for the Reverend clergy who are a part of this amazing celebration. All of the Reverend clergy, Benton, James Owens, Dynamic Duo, our Bishop Sean Brother Lewis and company in here, to others clergy whose names I do not know, but we meet you and we respect, most especially to the heart to grow, to uh, as I look at to family on the Lord have mercy. How we grow and shine all the family. Wow. Um, to God be the glory. In spite of and through it all, we're here to get because of God has called us. I believe this is a very meaningful moment for this family, all the family, to be true in Jesus' name. We pray that in some way the Lord provides for us words that will represent His voice to us. The Spirit of God took me the other day in Christopher's preparation to the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John. When I read the passage, it said, This is it. Then Jesus told them in John 12, again in the 30th verse, the voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out. When I am lifted from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. I just want to give God thanks for His voice. Thank you for His voice. For there was a Brian Gumble, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp. There was a Dan Duck. You seem to have known, perhaps, as you have been disclosed early on, what he wanted to do. Seems to have had a sense of his own personality, of his own way. Seems to have had a glimpse of 
how he wanted to contribute to his community and to his time. In other words, he seems to have found his voice. A voice that was unique, a voice that was intelligible, a voice that was clear, a voice that was cogent, a voice that was curious, that was both entertaining and informative. A voice that perhaps for all of us provides a way to discern our own voices. We're here together in this moment that is extremely holy and high. Who would have believed on a good Friday here we'd be? Surely he died. We are twisted between two voices. Right. Voice from the text, the voice from the context. Voice from the text says that when I be lifted up, I'll draw people to me. Yeah. Voice from the text said, Father, glorify your name. Yes. That's why I came here. Not to bring glory to me, right. but to bring glory to thee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father, bring light to yourself. Yes, yes. And because they were in constant contact and communication, the voice from the text said, I've already done that. All right. And I plan to do it once again. Yes. Right. Yes. We call him because of the voice from the context. The context of a young man from somewhere around here. Grew up, developed, had a sense of what he wanted to do. Perhaps had heard some other broadcasting and it caught his attention. And his love for the sport and his love for the tension of one versus the other. And the love of storytelling because that's what sport casting really is. Right. Telling the story. But no one knows the stories of those who scrimmaged on the field, what it took for them to be where they are. The grind, the behind the scenes, the struggle to create the character, the capacity, the ability to be on the field, to have the ability to go where the coach tells you to go and do what you are told to do and to be a part of a team, all of which were part of Uncle Don's early learning. To know that a family is like a team, that the members of the family are like a team, and that the people in the family each have their own individual personalities and dreams and perspectives and come from somewhere, but most of all, are going somewhere. Yes, sir. In the midst of his schooling and classes and all of that, and family and loved ones learn how to pull people together had developed in the midst of his own sense of his own voice. And we are the beneficiaries. That means we have been benefited, we have progressed, we have had some particular kind of uh, a sense of appreciation for, and we have progressed because of his voice. Some things about his voice that we celebrate today. Some things about his voice that we want to hear afresh in the context that allow us to leave from this place knowing we've been in the presence of the Lord. Because in some way, not only did he bring glory to God, but he also brought glory to what it means to be a child of God. And for this, we give God praise. I remember meeting Uncle Don, I married into the family, and Uncle Don was like a interview. You want to get the background check. He's just trying to come into the fact. Want to find out who the people are. And he had a real smooth interview style. It wasn't brash, it wasn't blunt, blunt. It was so like, what are you saying from? Cash a little something here. Well, you know what's going and it was smooth. You didn't know you were being interviewed. But he sure got the 9 with the 411. 
And you weren't getting in until Uncle Don gave you seal of proof. Over the years, he had an uncanny way of keeping up with you, even when you didn't know he was keeping up. As if he was keeping up with the statistics of various sports personalities and players, and some who had passed on and some who were coming onto the scene. He was a craft. He was a, 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 a person who paid attention to his craft. Perhaps it's one of the things that we want to glean as beneficiaries of his voice, to pay attention Focus on your purpose. To not be cavalier with what's been handed to you, but to take the gift, the time, the opportunity that God gives you and do something with it. To discern and begin to hone and craft what God gives you. To know that what God gives you is God's gift to you. But what you do with it is your gift that time. God had a way of taking story and making it fabulous. Why, when you he was called man and man, he had a way with words to put it together because it's the story that makes the moment, Amen. not the moment that makes the story. And in the context, the voice has brought us to a place where we recognize the gift that each of you have. I want you all to look at each other and say, You give it, you give it. Look at each other and say, You know, you give it. And because you're gifted, to whom much is given, say it out loud. Much is required. Don't you sit here on your gift. Don't you die without honing and crafting, working and grinding. In the night, when it's all by yourself, you got to be the one burning the midnight over. Perhaps that's a legacy family. Grind. You want to shine? Then yeah, learn how to grind. Right. Learn how to make it happen. A spin class, tell those who are spinning when I say, some of the bodies are made in the winter. You don't wait till the last minute. You make it happen as soon as you can. Take care of yourself. Perhaps there's one thing we benefit. The other one, I think, is one that. Uh, I think those are always talking to us about be on time. All right. <laughs> You're not ready in an hour, you might get left. <laughs> oh, don't get me stuck. I love you, but I will leave you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They're right on the top, they're leaving you. <laughs> You'll leave you because uh, being on time is a part of finding your. Being committed, being consistent, being professional it says that you take seriously what you have done and what you're doing. That because you paid the price through continuing to hone your craft, you're willing to give in excellence and present yourself in such a way that you are not only accessible but present. Yeah. Being present is more than just being arriving. of time when it wasn't perceived that the people of African descent were intelligent and were able to put two and two together. He broke barriers and stunned those who had particular ideas about our capacity. He was a pioneer. He was a pioneer. For just one minute. On the 60 seconds Forced the brothers, can't refuse it. Didn't see it, didn't choose it, but it's up to you to see it. We'll give account if we abuse it. We'll suffer if we lose it. Just a tiny minute.
knew the playbooks and knew how to call out some of the names and the players, knew the history, knew some of the statistics, and he could bring out certain notes that other people did not know, certain esoteric ideas and specifics of a person's story bring to life the challenges that people went through and kind of put things in context because these weren't just bodies on the field these were dreams and aspirations these were broken bones and playing to pain these were challenges of folk who got knocked down and got back up any people in here ever been knocked down and got back up you're more than just somebody to show you are your story you are a part of his voice. Yes. Oh, no, that we're bringing volume to the voices of the voices, helping to exhibit the excellence that provides the context by which we're able to know that we heard Andy Dunn, who was able to paint the pictures people couldn't see on the radio. You know, that was the, really the first medium of sports broadcasting, was the radio. Before there was the television, black and white. That was cut TV before huddled around in front of various uh, stores trying to see who was on. Before there was digital broadcasting and the podcast, that was this part of me. Can I just put this on as a condition before I close? Don't be afraid to start something, but there's only a few of you. All right, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. Don't let fear keep you from ladies and new trails. Michael Don's example and voice opened the ideas of students, young people, who perhaps in the broadcast uh, area, who, uh, who perhaps majoring in broadcasting or in some form of communication, had a model to go by. Yes. Don't be afraid to be different. Yes. Just because others don't do it, don't let people convince you you can't. <laughs> Don't let us tell you what you can't do. Find, hone, craft your own voice. Be bold, like Brother Don. Uncle Don. And every now and then, if you have to interview somebody, don't be afraid to do that too. You sure not do that. He was funny. Smart! Loved fiercely. Worked hard. Play hard. Right. He was like the one in the context, the text, who on a day like this, right. on the day in the text, he said, This voice you heard was for your benefit. Right. But a few days later, he found his own voice. Right. We hung him high. Yeah. And he stretched him wide. Yeah. And he found his own voice. Yeah. While he was up, one of the ones who was hung with him benefited from his voice. I look at that man preaching man. Said, Lord, when you come to your kingdom, that voice benefited those who had come to know Jesus, but at the last hour, let it be known that it's never too late to get to know Jesus. He found his voice. To let it be known that you're never by yourself. And even though you can't track them, you can trust them. And even though you can't see them, you can sense them. Now I want you to know that even though you can't see Pop there, she's going to hear his voice. After the proverb that says every time you think of somebody, it's still with it. You'll hear his voice. Telling you, boy, I told you not to do that. You? Let me stop. Stop it. Stop it. Yes, sir. Tell me, I'm proud of you. Yeah. And I love you. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't be. What you can't be. The voice that he found when he said, Mother, behold your son. Y'all take care of each other. Stick together. Don't let anything pull you apart. Life's too short. 
for time foolery. Finally, it's finished. When I started in you, I'm going to make it happen. Not by power. Mm -hmm. Not by might. Mm -hmm. But by my spirit. I'm going to make sure that whatever I've begun in you is bigger than you. Yeah. And I'm going to make it happen. In spite of you. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. Yes, yes, there'll be some ups and downs. Yes, but you can sing like the songwriter to say, oh, I've seen the lightning flash. Yes, I've heard the thunder roll. Sent anchors dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus say, Did you hear his voice? Still to fight on. He promised. I ain't gonna do that. I'm gonna let him come over Never to leave. Never to uh, leave me alone. No.
Please behave.